بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Tonight inshallah ta'ala we're going to be sitting down reflecting on one of the surahs from Jizu Tabarak perhaps many of us have memorized some of it or all of it inshallah ta'ala Surah Al-Haqa <coughs> in this surah is the 69th surah of the Quran and it's made up of 52 verses and it was revealed to the Prophet Ali salatu wasalam when he was in Mecca the name of this surah Al-Haqa which is said three times in the beginning of the surah what is the meaning of this word Al-Haqa it means the reality and it's one of the names of Yom al Qiyamah, of the day of resurrection. And it was called Al Haqqa because it is the Haqq, the truth that no one will be able to escape from. And everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that would happen on that day from the difficulties and the calamities of Yom al Qiyamah, the judgment, the hellfire, the scrolls of deeds being put in front of us, put, putting on public display, all of those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, all of them become haqq, become truth on that day. Also, everything will be revealed on that day. It will become haqq and truth and revealed to everyone, even the smallest things which are in our heart, all of it will become clear on that day. So everything will be made clear and it will be haqq and it will be truth on that day. And that's why one of the names of Yom Al Qiyamah is Al Haqqah. And the objectives of this surah, and this is important when you study tafsir, that before you enter into the surah, you understand what are the main themes, what are the main objectives of this surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to learn. And in Surah Al Haqqah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the reality and the truth of the day of resurrection. And he's warning those who deny this day. And he gives us examples of the past nations who were punished when they denied Yom Al Qiyamah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions as well some of the nations that were saved and how and why they were saved. And he shows us in this surah some of the horrors of Yom Al Qiyamah and the outcome for every individual. It will be one of two outcomes according to the path that we chose to follow in this life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the surah showing us the status and the greatness of the Quran Al Kareem. As we reflect on this surah, obviously we have one sitting and 52 verses. Even though they're short verses, we're not going to go through a word by word tafsir of the surah. We're just going to go through it and break it down into different sections, talking about the different mawdu'us or different topics of the surah. And we'll stop at some of the verses, obviously, and reflect on them as well. But we're not going to go through it verse by verse, just so everyone understands that from the beginning. We talk about reflections on the surah or lessons we gain from the surah. It's not the word for word, ayah for ayah, tafsir that we might think. The first section of the surah, we can divide it to the first eight ayat that are mentioned. The first three of these ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the name al-haqqa how many times? Three times. And what impact does this have on the qari? The one who is reciting the surah, when he reads, Al-Haqa, Mal-Haqa, Wa Ma Adaraka, Mal-Haqa, three times it comes. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, when he says this, it's not just to say, just to repeat. There has to be wisdom behind it being repeated. What is the objective here? What is the wisdom by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala repeating this verse? Or this, the meaning, this name of this surah three times. To show us the reality. To show us how severe it's going to be. This day and this haqq and this truth that's going to become apparent to everyone on that day. 
The ones that used to deny it, it's coming. al haqq the haqq, the truth is coming. And then he started to give us examples, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the verses that come after, from verse 4 and onwards, of some of the nations that denied and lied about the resurrection and Yom al Qiyamah. He said in verse number 4, subhanahu wa ta'ala, كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ وَعَادٌ بِالْقَارِعَةِ that Thamud and Ad, they denied Al-Qari'a. The word Al-Qari'a, it means the striking calamity. And in Surah Al-Qari'a, how many times is it mentioned as well in the beginning of the Surah? Also three times, just like Surah Al-Haqqa, the same. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us here that these people, the people of Thamud, they were the people of who? Which prophet? The people of Thamud. Salih, alayhi salam. And the people of Ad, the people of who? Of Hud, alayhi salam. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions <coughs> Al-Qari'ah, another one of the names of Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And subhanAllah, throughout the Quran, different names and different descriptions are given to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And each name has one of the descriptions, one of the things that will happen Yom al Qiyamah. Al Qari'ah, it's like when the bell comes and rings, it strikes. What happens if you're sitting and you're in a peaceful state and someone rings a very loud bell next to you? What happens? It startles you, it shocks you. Even they say it's bad for the heart. So the same thing will happen to the people Yom al Qiyamah when that type of Qari'ah, that striking of, of the bell or that striking calamity comes Yom Al-Qiyamah as well. When that striking calamity comes Yom Al-Qiyamah, the Qari'a, it will also have the same effect on the people as well. Throughout history, <coughs> people have denied and lied about Yom Al-Qiyamah, al Yom Al-Qiyamah, that it's not coming. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran reminds that it's the truth and it's going to come. In Surah Al-Waqi'a, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the beginning of the surah? إِذَا وَقَعَتِ الْوَاقِعَةِ When the inevitable, uh, in, inevitable occurs. خلاص, the haq, when it happens, it's going to happen. No doubt about it. لَيْسَ لِوَقَعَتِهَا كَاذِبًا On that day, at that time, there will be no denying when it be false. When the waqi'ah, when al haqa, when it comes, there will be no one who can deny it. خلاص. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned some of the punishments that the people of Thamud and Ad received. The people of Thamud, that they were destroyed by the Taghiya, which is the overpowering blast or an awful cry. And the people of Ad, they were destroyed by Rihin, by a wind, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described as Sarsarin Atiya, which is a fierce or screaming violent wind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described how they were punished by that wind. And subhanAllah, you can imagine, some of us have been caught in storms, or you see how tornadoes come and those violent winds come, and everyone's praying, everyone's hoping that's going to finish quickly. But because these people, they went so far astray, and they denied the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them, <coughs> and made them an example for those who came after them. He punished them with this wind for how long? Allah described it to us in the, in, in the next verse. عَلَيْهِمْ That Allah imposed it upon them. سَبْعَ لَيَالٍ وَثَمَانِيَةَ أَيَّامٍ For seven nights and eight days, حُسُومًا أي in succession. Non-stop. Non-stop the wind. It punished them for those seven nights and eight days. And what was the outcome for those people? فَتَرَ الْقَوْمَ فِيهَا So you'll see the people, the men. After that you'll see them. سَرْعَى كَأَنَّهُمْ أَعْجَازُ نَخْلٍ خَاوِيَةً You will see them overthrown, destroyed, as if they were hollow trunks of date palms. SubhanAllah. Allah gives the example. And you see how the storm, how it happens to the date palms and the trees, how they're destroyed, 
and they're left there as rubbish, as ruins. This is the reality of those people, and that's how they were left after they were punished by these winds. And the next section of the surah, from verses 9 to 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions three other nations. Very briefly, other nations that were punished when they turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and denied the truth. The people of Fir'aun, wal-mu'tafikat bil khatiya meaning the people of Lut, the cities who were overthrown and, and, he, and when, they, when they committed sins and oppressed themselves and turned away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah destroyed them. And obviously in other verses in the Quran mentions how he destroyed the, the different people. And then that was in verse number 9. And then verse number 11, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions briefly Nuh and the people of Nuh and how the people were saved as well. He mentions and what, what, what comes after that. But something interesting, if you look into this, in verse number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one of the main reasons why these people were punished. And we read the Quran and we see why the past nations were punished. It's upon us to reflect and to understand what they did. Why? Not just for historical facts. Why do we need to look and to reflect on the things that they did? So we can stay away from it ourselves and not fall into the same traps and the same mistakes that they fell into. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in verse 10? فَعَصَوْ رَسُولَ رَبِّهِمْ فَأَخَذَهُمْ أَخْذَةَ الرَّابِيَةً that they disobeyed their Lord's messenger. So he punished them with a strong and severe punishment. They disobeyed their Lord's messenger. All throughout the Quran and all throughout the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet wasallam, Allah talks about the importance of obeying his messenger wasallam. In fact, in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the objective of him sending the prophets is so they would be obeyed and to be followed. He said subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And we have only sent the messengers so that they will be obeyed through the permission of Allah. <coughs> and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah An-Nur, that if you obey him, you will be rightfully guided. If you're truly going to be guided, the only way is to follow the Prophet ﷺ. And all throughout the Quran, in more than 25 verses, Allah commands us, Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And in the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet ﷺ, and Sahih al-Bukhari and others, our beloved Prophet ﷺ said, I smell of this hadith. I love this hadith. Because this hadith, when you reflect on what it's being said, it makes you pay attention. And has a very clear message. A very clear message with a, with a very clear outcome. Our beloved Prophet والسلام, was sitting with his companions and he said, That all of my ummah, all of my nation will enter into the Jannah except for the one who refuses. Allah Akbar. Right away you hear that. He's like, who would refuse, right? And this is what the Sahaba radiallahu anhum said to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. وَمَنْ يَأْبَى يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Who would refuse? Who would be that ignorant? Who would be that stupid that he would refuse to enter into the Jannah? But look at the answer of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And this shows you, shows you the beauty and how simple Islam is. This is the way. Very clear way. He said, alayhi salatu wasalam, man ata'ani dakhal al-jannah. Whoever obeys me, he will enter into the jannah. Wa man asani faqad aba. And the one who disobeys me, then he's refused. That's very clear. You have two choices, either to follow and obey the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, or to disobey him. If you obey him, you go to the jannah. If you disobey him, then you refuse to go to the jannah. It was your choice. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and shows us in verse number 12 the wisdom 
Because nowadays, when we're seeing what's happening with the coronavirus, we're seeing people being destroyed, people die, we're seeing calamities. A couple of years ago, we saw the, the, the tsunami, we're seeing earthquakes, all of these things where people are being destroyed in the blink of an eye. So what is the wisdom behind these things? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in verse 12, لِنَجْعَلَهَا لَكُمْ تَذْكِرَةً وَتَعِيَهَا أُدْنُ وَاعِيَا That we will make it a reminder for you and the conscious ear will be conscious of it. The one who pays attention. He'll be conscious of it and he'll benefit from it. All of these things that happen, they're signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just this week, how many things happen? It started with the earthquake in Turkey. And then as we start to reflect on that, the coronavirus. And we see that on the news that we, what we're being told in the beginning is not true. It's, just, it's like from the movies, man. 56 million people be, being trapped in, in their city. Open fire on them if they try to escape their city. This is serious. The next day, Kobe dies. And the helicopter crash. Bismillah. Two days later, Trump with his so-called deal of the century. Allahu Akbar. And this is all in one week. One after the other. Each one of these things needs to bring us back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of these is a sign from Allah to tell us, here, لِنَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ تَذْكِرَةً It's a reminder for you, these things. These are all punishments from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All reminders from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You saw what happened in the past nations. Let it be a reminder for you so you don't fall into the same thing that they fell into. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا وَمَا نُرْسِلُ بِالْآيَاتِ إِلَّا تَخْوِيفًا That we only send these ayat, these signs, تَخْوِيفًا to put fear into the hearts of the people so that you will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recognize these signs when they come to you. Something interesting when you see the calamities that happens throughout the world when people are punished. Sometimes some evildoers are punished in this life, and inshallah, they're going to be punished in the next as well. But sometimes we see the punishment, like we're talking about in these stories now, and sometimes you don't see the punishment. But rest assured that these individuals who are the valimin, the evildoers, that they're being punished. We see many of the people who are these famous magicians and they're into the music, into the actors and all of this, that these people survive on drugs and alcohol, antidepressants, and many of them overdose because of this, because of the evil they're doing and the corruption they're doing upon earth. SubhanAllah, one of the leaders who is a corrupter upon earth, SubhanAllah, at a very young age, we were told that this individual, he can't even sleep at night. This is the stress he's going through. So you might see the palaces, and you see that there's someone who, who he looks rich and looks and he, successful. You think he might have it all, he has the power. But inside, he's living in a living hell as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that he's in jaheem, in himself. He's living in a living hell and going through the difficulties. He's being punished in this life. And subhanAllah, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will humiliate him and punish him more. And he'll die in that way and then he'll be punished in his grave until yawm al-qiyamah and then enter into the hellfire eternally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us all, ya rabbil alameen. Something interesting, subhanAllah, when you reflect on these verses, and as I was preparing this the other day, I noticed this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about disobeying the messengers, the people who disobeyed the messengers, and they were punished because of this. And then after that, in, that was in verse 10, and then verse 11, mention, mentions the people who were saved, the people of Nuh who were saved by the Jariyah, meaning the sailing ship, by the Ark of Noah. And then I remembered the statement of Imam Malik when he described the sunnah of our beloved Prophet as Safinat Nuh, as the ship or the ark of, of Nuh. <coughs> he said that whoever gets on it, he will be saved. And whoever doesn't get on it, then he will be destroyed. 
This is the sunnah of our beloved Prophet ﷺ. Whoever follows it, then he's going to be saved. And whoever turns away from the sunnah of our beloved Prophet ﷺ, he will be destroyed. Our beloved Prophet ﷺ, he said, تُرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْبَيْضَاءِ لَيْلُهَا كَالنَّهَارِهَا لَا يَزِيلُ عَنْهَا إِلَّا هالك. That I left you on that which is bayda, that which is clear, the clear path. No one goes astray from it except for the halik, the one who has destroyed himself, the one who has gone astray. The next section, which comes after that, from verses 13 to 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning in the, in, the, in the first 12 verses, those who do not deny it, the resurrection and how they were destroyed and they were punished and those who were saved, the ones who followed the prophets and the ones who didn't follow them, how they were destroyed as well. All of this is a type of introduction for what's coming in the next ayat. Because from verses 13 to 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to describe for us some of the horrors of Yawm Al-Qiyamah, some of the reality of what's going to go down Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And then the verses which come after that, sections 4 and 5 of this chapter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to show us the outcome for everyone depending on the path that you followed in this life. In verse 13, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by talking about the blowing of the horn. فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدًا When it's blown into the horn with one blast, who will blow into the horn? Israfil alayhi salam. And how many times will he blow into the horn? Two times. One time at the end of this dunya, so everything will come to an end. Anyone still alive will die, and that will be the end of the dunya. And the second blowing, and this is what's being referred to, inshallah ta'ala, here in this ayah, <coughs> the second blowing, which is when he will blow, and all of the souls will return to their bodies. And the bodies will be formed again, and all of us will come forth Yom Al Qiyamah to stand in lines to be judged accordingly to our actions in this dunya to stand in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala then describes what's going to happen to the earth, to the mountains, to the sky, the greatest creations of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What's going to happen to these great creations on that day? And that shows you the severity of Yom Al Qiyamah how strong the mountains are, how powerful the earth is, how amazing the creation of the sky is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what's going to happen on that day? That the mountain, the earth and the mountains will be removed from their places and it will be crushed. It will be crushed with a single crushing. It's finished. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, فَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ وَقْعَةِ الْوَاقِعَةِ ah, That on that day, should the great event befall, خلاص. the ones who denied it, here it is happening, خلاص. the earth, the mountains have been destroyed, the amazing sky that we see in front of us, وَنْشَقَّتِ sama, that the heaven will be split asunder, فَهِيَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ it becomes on that day, وَهِيَ torn up, خلاص. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالْمَلَكُ عَلَىٰ أَرْجَائِهَا That the angels will be on the edges, meaning on the edges of the sky. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ ثَمَانِيَا That they will bear the throne of your Lord, your Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, on that day, eight of them, eight of the angels. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ تُعْرَضُونَ لَا تَخْفَى مِنْكُمْ خَافِيَا On that day, تُعْرَضُونَ that you will be put on display, an exhibition. For what? For judgment. But not just put on judgment. لا تخفى منكم خافية. لا تخفى means nothing will be hidden, not even a خافية, not a single thing will be concealed. Nothing. All of it. يوم تبلى تبلى السرائر The day that the سرائر, the secrets, all of it will come out. All of it will be displayed. Every single thing you, 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 that we did, the suhuf, nushirat. The suhuf, the scrolls of our deeds, nushirat, it will be put on display, public display for everyone to see. Will you care about someone else's deeds on that day? 
What's going to be said on that day? As it came in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Nafsi, nafsi. Myself, myself. How did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala describe it in Surah Abasa? The yawm, the day. And think before we mention these ayat, really quick. Who are the most beloved people to you in this life? Family, children, mother, father, siblings. What does Allah say in this verse, these verses in Surah Abasa? Yawma yafiru al-maru min akhir. The day the man will run away from Akhihi, from his brother. Wa ummihi wa abi, his own mother and own father. Wa sahibatihi wa bani. His spouse and his own children. Your children who you would sacrifice yourself for and die for in this life. You run away from them yawm al qiyamah. Why? Li kulli mri minhum yawm aidin sha'nu yugni. That on this day, everyone has his own worry to worry about. Nafsi, nafsi. What's going to concern us about the scrolls of deeds being put here and nothing being hidden from it, nothing being concealed, is that we're standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now to be judged. And all of it's there written. We can't hide anything. Khalas. What we did. It's all there in front of us to be held accountable for it. All of it be put into a scale of good deeds to see where you go to the hellfire or to Jannah. Then as Allah continues in the surah, in the next section from verses 19 to 24, he shows us the first outcome of one of the two possible outcomes. And these outcomes, all of it depends on the choice that we make in this life. So the first outcome will be those who will say, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابُهُ بِيَمِينِ the ones who will be given their books in their right hand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the Ya Rabbil Alameen. The ones who are given their book, be Yameenhi, in his right hand. What will they say? See, here, read my record. I thought I was going to, I will meet my account. And look at the happiness. Of this individual. Look at my, 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 my deeds. I'm going to Jannah. I got my book in my right hand. I'm going to Jannah. Just like the reality in this life. When you receive your degree or you receive something impressive, what do you do? You, you hold it up for everyone to see. We go to our offices. It's on the wall. PhD. Master's. BA. Right behind us. huh? Award this. Award that. It's all up there. Your trophies and all of these things up, up on your shelf when you walk into the office. We're so proud of it. That's, that's going to be the reality of al Qiyamah, huh? Look, look. Iqra'u kitabiyah. Read my book. Read my book and look how I was successful in going to Jannah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes some of the things that they will get in the Jannah. How is their life going to be in Jannah? فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ That he's going to be in a pleasant and a good life. Pleased with his life. Happy. Alhamdulillah. فِي جَنَّةٍ عَالِيَةٍ In elevated gardens. قُطُوفُهَا Dania. It's the qutuf, the fruits of the Jannah will be Dania, meaning what? Hanging close near you. So you, as you're chilling out, say with your family, inshallah, your wife, children, close friends, just grab, a, grab the fruit, grab another fruit from here. And the amazing thing about the, the fruits of the, of the Jannah, as it came in the tafsir in Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the, the risk that will be given, and he said, that only comes similar in how it looks perhaps but as Ibn Abbas said that each time in Jannah the fruits and what you eat in Jannah it becomes more delicious and more pleasurable each time so the first apple you had the second one is more delicious the thousand apple number thousand you have is one thousand times more delicious than the first one you have how about that not like in the dunya we had an amazing apple and you go back to buy one, it's like, oh man, that's, that's sour, that's nasty. Huh? That one wasn't good, let me get another. No. Alhamdulillah, each time it's better, guaranteed. Alhamdulillah. This is the first category. The ones who followed the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to follow. And that's why Allah said at the end of these verses in this category, Kulu, it'll be said to them, Kulu washrabu, eat and drink, Hanian, in satisfaction. Hani'an. Why? Bima aslaftum 
في الأيام الخالية. That which you put forth in the past days, the effort that you made, the good deeds that you did, the haram that you were willing to leave for Allah, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you get to enjoy it and be in the pleasure in because you did all of that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, kulu washrabu hanian. Eat and drink in satisfaction and in pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a reward for striving for Allah in this dunya. Then the second category comes. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِ The ones who will receive their book in the left hand, and may Allah protect us, that we won't be from them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. What are they going to say? فَيَقُولُوا يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَ He will say, I wish I was not given my record. وَلَا مَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَ and I hadn't known what my account would be. Ya laytaha kanat al And he's saying here that I wish my death was the end. I wish there was nothing after it. SubhanAllah. And that same meaning came in verse 40, the last verse in Surah al naba When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Yawma yanzuru al-mar'u ma qaddamat yada. The day when each individual will observe, will observe, will observe and see ma qaddamat yada, he will see that which his own hands put forth. Because this is the reality, is that with our own hands, our own deeds, we're putting into our scale of good deeds and we're putting into our scale of bad deeds. This is for my good deeds, this is for my bad deeds. And what will the kafir say on that day? Allah said at the end of the verse, وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا He will say, I wish I was turab. I wish I was dust and dirt. SubhanAllah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Hashr commanded us, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهُ وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Oh, you have believed, fear Allah and let every soul look at that which it puts forth for tomorrow. This is the reality. Everything we do, we're putting it forth for tomorrow. So fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pay attention to your actions. This is the meaning of taqwa. You have that consciousness of Allah in your life. Will Allah be pleased with this? Bismillah, I do it. Will Allah be displeased with this? And I stay away from it, inshallah. What are these people going to say? And if you reflect on the death of Kobe Bryant, who was someone who was very successful. But what's the, what are these people going to say, Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Just like him and people who follow in the footsteps will say, Ma agna anni maliya, halaka anni sultaniya. My, my wealth will not avail me. And gone from me is my authority. It means nothing. All of that that he accomplished, as soon as the helicopter hit the ground, it meant nothing. Nothing. Would he have given all of his money to, to, to live? Would he have given the fame to live? People want to live, man. People want to survive. The one wish of everyone is what? Rabbi Rji'un. Oh, my Lord, send me back. But the reality is, none of it's going to benefit you, Yom Al-Qiyamah, unless you do what is pleasing to your Creator with it. If you strive to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then, alhamdulillah, if you have from the khair, from the dunya, and all of these things, you can benefit yourself and benefit others with it. And then it will be said, as Allah mentioned some of their punishments. Just as the first group, he mentioned some of what? Some of the pleasures that they're going to get. Now the second group, what's going to happen to them? They receive their book where? Left hand. It will be said then after that, Allah will say, Seize him and shackle him. And then drive him into the hellfire. Then into the chain who is linked is 70 cubits, insert him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these punishments, then he comes after and shows us some of the things that they used to do. Now is when we stop and reflect. So this is the severe punishment. They got their book in the left hand, they're going to the hellfire and chains being 
dragged and thrown into in, in shackles, thrown into the, to the Jahannam. May Allah protect us. What did they used to do? What are the things that they used to do? إِنَّهُ كَانَ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ That he didn't believe, didn't used to believe in Allah, Al-Azim, the great subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَىٰ طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ Nor do they encourage feeding the poor. When Allah mentions these things in the Qur'an, reasons why people were put into the hellfire, we need to stop and we need to reflect. If you look for an example in Surah Al-Mudathir, when the question comes to the people who will be put into the hellfire, ما سلككم في سقر What puts you into the sakr? Into the hellfire? So right away, as they're about to answer, ah, I need to take out my, my, my pen now, I need to take some notes. I, need to, I don't want to be in a hurry just to get to the end of the surah. I, I need to stop and reflect now. Do my homework. You have, you have your highlighter when you do your homework, right? The key points. So now, <coughs> these points, let me take a note of it. Have, have my little... A little book here on the side. You see, I'm, oh, it has notes on the back too. It's good. <laughs> so I have, my, I have my, little, my little notebook here now. I'm going to take some notes. I have my, my, my finger, which has a pen on the end. Mashallah. Huh? Bismillah. What's the first thing these people say? What's the first reason why they're in the hellfire? Qalu, they said, Lam nakum min az That we weren't from those who used to pray. They didn't used to pray. Huh? What's my situation in my prayer? Now I start to reflect on my prayer. I don't want to be like them. So, how am I with my prayer? Second thing, what do they used to do? Hmm? The same thing mentioned here in the, in, in the verse in, uh, in Surah Al-Haqqa as well. That we didn't used to feed the poor people. Ah, my zakat, my sadaqah. Where am I when it comes to my zakat? I'm paying on time, I'm fulfilling my... The, it's it's, 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 it's uh, Allah's right upon me to pay my zakat. Okay, after my, my zakat, what am I doing with my, my sadaqah? Am I giving enough sadaqah? Now I'm holding myself to account. What comes after that? And we used to talk falsehood with those who engaged in it. Hey, keeping bad company. Who are my friends? Who are those around me? Are they helping me get to Jannah? Or are they calling me to the hellfire? I don't want to be with them. And we used to deny the day of deen, of recompense. Yom al Qiyamah. So these are the characteristics they mention. And similar when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the characteristics that put the people into Jannah. For example, when Allah tells us in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, قَدْ أَفْلَهَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That indeed the believers have been successful. Then he starts to give us the descriptions. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي الصَّلَاةِ مَخَاشِ In the first, they're, they're, they've had the tranquility, and the peace in their salat. So I start taking notes once again and see where, I, where am I from these characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the beginning of the surah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, because when we talked about, he talked about people of Jannah, what were they doing? Qutufuha daniya. Grabbing fruits, chilling out. Maybe you see them with like the grapes, you know. <laughs> Got your wife eating your grapes in Jannah, inshallah. What did Allah then say about the people of, Jah of Jahannam? فَلَيْسَ لَهُ الْيَوْمَ هَا هُنَا حَمِيمٌ The first thing is that on this day, he will not have a hameem. A devoted friend. And this meaning comes throughout the Quran. Even if you go back to the verses we were just mentioning in Surah uh, Al Mudathir, in the verse, two verses after the we mentioned the reasons we mentioned, Allah says, That they will not, no one will be able to intercede for them. No one can help you, Yom Al Qiyamah. So on this day, Allah is telling us there will be no Hameem. There will be no devoted friend. And no food for them. When they go into the Jahannam. Illa min ghislin. Except for from ghislin. What is ghislin? The discharge of wounds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Subhanallah. That's Allah afiya. Subhanallah. The discharge of wounds. La ya'kuluhu illa al khati'oon. That no one will eat it except for the khati'oon, the ones who are the sinners. <laughs> and interesting, when you look at this al khati'oon, this ta'bir or the, or the wording of the Qur'an. What is the word khatim from khata Making mistakes. I mean, these two individuals, they had the choice to take the correct path or the wrong path. But they made the khata They made the mistake <coughs> by choosing the wrong path. They, they, had the, uh, they had the ability to choose either path as the path they chose. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from verses 38 to the end of the surah, to verse 52, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
describes the truthfulness of the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that he has fulfilled his duty in relaying the message and, and relaying the Quran, the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah shows us the status and the greatness of the Quran in these verses. Allah starts off these verses in verse 38 <coughs> by saying, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ By swearing. And the general ruling or the general principle when it comes to the tafsir when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something from his creation in the Quran that we pay attention to what's coming after it because it's something that's important. It's something that we need in our lives. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with shamsi wa duha, 11 different things Allah swears by to talk about the importance of the nafs which come after that and making tiski or purifying our nafs in Surah al-Shams for example. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said فَلَا <coughs> أُقْسِمُ So I swear بِمَا تُبْصِرُونَ By that which you see وَمَا لَا تُبْصِرُونَ And that which you do not see. Allah Akbar. Allah in these verses is swearing by every single thing in His creation. That which you can see in front of you and that which you cannot see and don't have knowledge of. And this is showing that what's about to be said is something عظيم, something great. What does Allah tell us after that? إِنَّهُ لَا قَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ That it is verily the honored messenger, the statement of the honored messenger. And what's meant by this, so you don't understand the, 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 misunderstand the wording of it, that obviously the Qur'an is going to come in a, in a, in a bit, inshallah ta'ala, that it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the revelation of Allah. But here, the one who carried it is the messenger. How did it come? How did the Qur'an come to us? Revelation, but how did it come? What is the... Because, if, For example, if you receive an ijaza, if you memorize the Qur'an, or maybe some of us are lazy, so our, our, our kids will come and memorize the Qur'an. May Allah make our kids from the Hufadi Rabbil Alameen. If they come and memorize the Qur'an, if you've ever been to one of these uh, ceremonies where they're given the Qur'an, they're given the ijaza. The sheikh says, I give it to you from my sheikh, so-and-so, from his sheikh, so-and-so, his sheikh, so-and-so, this isnad, this is Islam. Huh? From my sheikh. To, for example, Ubay ibn Ka'b, the great Sahabi, radiallahu anhu. To Muhammad, and Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To, from Jibreel, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the isnad. So Allah sent it through Jibreel to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, in Surah Al-Taqwiyah, the same verse came. Inhu la qawlu rasulun kareem. The scholars mentioned there is talking about Jibreel here, talking about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's the one who came in with it to the people. But it's the word of who? Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah in the next verses shows and refutes the enemies of Islam who slandered the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah said that it's not biqawli sha'ir. It's not the statement of a poet. And also he said not biqawli kahin. And it's not the statement of a soothsayer. Then at the end of each of these two verses, Allah mentions the reasons why these people reject it. And they said these type of things to the Prophet wasallam. In the beginning of the first verse, قَلِيلًا مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ The second one, قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ That little do you believe, and the second one, little do you remember. When you don't have the iman, you won't benefit from the reminder. Even though these people, they knew Quraysh, many examples, they knew that the Prophet والسلام, was truly a prophet from Allah. Even Abu Jahl admitted it. Even Abu Jahl admitted it. He knew he was the Prophet but refused to follow him because he was from a different part of the tribe. They knew it was the truth. They knew the Quran was the claim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they refused to follow it and they rejected it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts more emphasis and more clarity when he said, Tanzilum mi Rabbil Alameen. That it's the revelation from Rabbil Alameen from the Lord of the worlds. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes with something very strong to show because the people are claiming that this is the words of Muhammad and this is, and his statement, and this is this. So here he says that even if he were to try to add something, alayhi salatu was salam, or try to change something, or any of the prophets, if they try to change anything of the revelation and say this is from Allah, what did Allah say? وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَاوِيلِ That if the prophet Muhammad had tried to make up some false statements in it. What would have happened to him? Look at this, how, how severe it is in, in this. مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ That we have seized him with the, with the right hand. ثُمَّ مِنْهُ الْوَتِيلِ Then we would have certainly cut off his life artery. 
And none of you would have been able to prevent him from being punished by us. So this is from Tanzil min Rabbil Alameen. It's a revelation to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's no way that the Prophet Muhammad, peace he wouldn't do it anyways, but even if he would, there's no way he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let him do it. Because this is the revelation that was sent through Jibreel, sent to the Prophet Muhammad, his, his duty is to relay it just as it came down. Just as it was revealed to him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the surah starts to come to an end, he shows us that when it comes to the Quran, we will be one of two. Either those who are going to benefit from it, or those who are going to be from us who regret that they didn't benefit from it. The first group, Allah said, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَذْكِرَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That indeed, it is a reminder for who? A reminder, who's going to benefit from it? We go back to just what we said in the beginning. قَلِيلُ مَا تُؤْمِنُونَ قَلِيلُ مَا تَذَكِّرُونَ If you don't have the iman, the reminder is not going to benefit you. The same meaning here. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَذْكِرَةٌ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ It's a reminder, but only for who? Who can truly benefit from it? The mutaqeen, those who have taqwa. And the same meaning came in the beginning of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. When Allah said about the Quran, Hudan Al-Muttaqeen. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ This is the book, there's no doubt about it. Hudan, source of guidance. But not for everyone. Al-Muttaqeen, those are the ones who will truly benefit from it. It can open up doors for the disbelievers to enter as well. If they truly reflect and open up and, and, and reflect on it, it can all be a source of guidance. But the ones who truly benefit from it and those, those, who, those who reflect on the, on the Qur'an, those who act upon the Qur'an. And throughout the Qur'an, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives examples that the Qur'an is huda and shifa and that it's shifa and rahmah, but once again for who? Lil-mu'mineen, for the believers. Then Allah mentions after that the second category. وَإِنَّا لَنَعْلَمُ أَنَّ مِنْكُمْ مُكَذِّبِينَ Indeed we know that from you are deniers. Deniers about what? About, about this Qur'an. وَإِنَّهُ لَا حَسْرَةٌ عَلَى الْكَافِرِينَ And indeed, it will be hasra. It will be something they're going to regret for the disbelievers, for the kafirin. What are they going to regret? First of all, they're going to regret two main things. The first thing they're going to regret is that they didn't benefit from it in this dunya. They didn't benefit from its huda, from its guidance, from its rahmah, from its mercy, from its shifa, from it, it being a source of healing for what's in the hearts and for the bodies as well. That they have this amazing revelation sent to all of mankind, but yet they didn't benefit from it. This would be the first thing that they will regret. The second thing, when they see the reward, yawm al-qiyamah, of those who believed in it and acted upon it. And they see the punishment for themselves, the ones who denied it and turned away from it, subhanAllah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this surah with two very powerful verses when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a clear message and a clear warning to those who turn away from the Qur'an. And a clear message also to those who follow and act upon the Qur'an. When he says about the Qur'an, وَإِنَّهُ لَحَقُّ الْيَقِينَ and indeed, it is the haq, the truth, al yaqeen, the certainty. For the believer now, when you hear this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases your iman, your yaqeen, your certainty in the Quran. So, the one who sent down this amazing revelation to us, what is he deserving of? What do we need to do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He finishes the surah by saying, Fasabbih bismi rabbik al azim. So, glorify. The ism, the name of your Rabb, of your Lord al azim the most great subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are some of the benefits and the lessons that we gain uh, from this surah. And inshallah ta'ala, into our next gathering, inshallah ta'ala. Allah knows best. Allah alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barakatuh. Muhammad wa jazakum Allah khairan.